a massive game. Man City versus Chelsea. Man City at minus 313. Spurs uh, like the old Jumbo Jet. 7-4-7. Seven, seven. Uh, draw plus 459. Man City minus 1.5 at minus 108. I seriously was going to go Man City and over 3.5 here. I think Man City could really torture this Chelsea side who are not really defending very well. But... Man City don't keep clean sheets. Even if they win by five, the other team always find a way. So I was surprised to see that the, un the over is at three and a half, at plus 119. Uh, Brad, you can have first dabs at this because, remember, Man City have been involved in Europe, even though it, it was comfortable and it was a glorified training session, if you like, because they passed, they moved, um, and they've got such a great squad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... Losing Bernardo kind of did stink uh, for that midweek match. Uh, Bernardo Silva there. But I'm so pro Manchester City in this match that it's going to make my stomach hurt. And it goes back to what I've said about this Chelsea side in defending. They are defending spaces, like just air. And they don't get back when they go in transition to – to if you're going to just defend space. Like I think – I'm not really a big believer in that, especially at the highest of levels. But if you're going to do that and you transition and you don't come back to where you should be, where your space is, you're going to get beat, especially against a Manchester City team uh, that is the kings of finding those space. Um, we'll see if, if this is the match where Poch decides – Pochettino decides that I need to play a little bit more tackly sound. I need to drop five in the back uh, because if they don't, I think Manchester City run this up. And it's going to be one of those gross ones. If you want to take Manchester City to win in over two and a half like we did, I think that's the safer route. If you want to take Manchester City to win and Chelsea to score, I think it makes sense. My only problem and the reason I didn't add that to my sheet is because Manchester City are conceding on low XG and low chances. And I want kind of like a little bit more of a return um, for the little amount of opportunities I'm going to have to hit that bet. But another return, and we've talked about it, and they still haven't changed the price, guys, since Kevin De Bruyne has been back, um, is uh, KDB assist. Uh, De Bruyne assist here. He's been absolutely spectacular in getting assists. His number is plus 135. Uh, you guys have to remember this is the guy who's going to take the corners. This is the guy who's going to take the set pieces. And I don't care. So last match, if anybody watched the midweek match, they played uh, him in a more forward position. And I was worried at first until – Jack Grealish came out, and then once Jack Grealish got hurt, they moved him more central, folded out wider because uh, Jeremy Doku is not as good, as strong as on with possessing the ball, which helps more for passes. But even when he was in that forward position, um, I still thought he was looking to facilitate despite taking three shots in the first 15 minutes of that match. So I like the assist here um, for the three reasons. He's going to probably be playing more of that central role as the facilitator, the guy who's going to be holding the ball, passing, not holding Rodri, that's Rodri, but you know what I mean, as opposed to going forward, trying to to score. Um, he's going to be facilitating. Number two, he takes the corners. And he's gonna, Number three, he's going to take the uh, set pieces as well. Hasn't been doing too great on a set piece shooting as well, so I would imagine that I don't think he's going to keep trying to knock that hammer, knock that nail into the wood. He's going to probably try to facilitate more so i like those two bets i think this is probably one that I, I probably shouldn't be as excited about but i think he has an opportunity to go insane i mean this match just it just breathes a ton of city goals that's just all i see i wouldn't rule out the chelsea getting a couple neither uh i've got this like, like man city 4-2 i just feel as if chelsea just don't see danger uh <laughs> and and they they just leave their leave their players like isolated and and it's almost like Oh, well, sorry, uh, we're a bit busy at the moment, but it's almost like the house is on fire. This is the way to put it, Marco, here. Chelsea, individually, they're on fire. They ring the fire brigade and they're like, yeah, we'll be there in a while, but there's no urgency. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, Monday night against Crystal Palace was, was mad, wasn't it? It had all that ball in the first half and had one shot. Um, and then second half, they, they did turn it on in, in spells, but without being completely convincing. And <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is going to be difficult for them. How do they try and attack Man City? Do they try and follow the Everton blueprint from last week who frustrated City for 70-odd for minutes? Um, I'm not sure they've got the ability to do that. I don't think Pochettino is a the kind of coach who can engineer that kind of performance uh, or tactical master plan from this Chelsea side? Or do they kind of go for it, really, and just try and, you know, 
give City a, a game because individually, let's not forget, Chelsea do have some extremely good players. Uh, they're an incredibly uh, expensive, well-assembled squad um, full of young players who are erratic. There is a lot of variance with those kind of young type players. But um, going forward, Christopher Nkunku, Cole Palmer, uh, even Raheem Sterling at times, Madaweke at times, these are players who can play um, as they showed in the reverse, which ended in that 4-4 thriller. So, um, yeah, I think they can sort of contribute, <laughs> but that's about it because ultimately you want to back City in this scenario. Um, Chelsea away from home against the big teams that matter have been abysmal. Um, we saw yes. Liverpool just steamroll them at Anfield. We saw them concede four goals recently at home to Wolves, for example. I think City score at least twice, possibly three. Um, Chelsea have already conceded twice in seven of 12 away from home. Um, it's just whether Chelsea can contribute, and I do think they can. So, you know, City kept back-to-back -back clean sheets to start the season in the Premier League. They've since kept four clean sheets in 21. Um, seven of their 11 visitors to the Etihad have scored, and Chelsea, for all their faults, have scored in 16 of the last 18, including 10 of 12 away. If you look at their record away, stuffed Liverpool, but scored. Um, beaten at United, but scored. Beaten at Newcastle, well, demolished at Newcastle, but scored. Smashed up at West Ham, but scored. Lost at Wolves, but scored. Uh, then there was a the game at Spurs, which ended 4-1, which is just a you know, massive asterisk beside that. But um, anyway, just a bit of maths, really, which is bringing me on to my, my best bet here, which is Man City to win and BTTS. I just think the price value terms, you've got to take it, really. Uh, on BetUS, BTTS is uh, minus 140 as a single. The money line of Man City there is minus 313. So if you're going to back BTTS at minus 140, the market is saying there's a very high chance that both teams score here. Why are you not combining the two in Man City at minus 313? If you multiply those two prices, you'll get about what, plus 140. Um, I think it's plus 160 for Man City to win and both teams to score. So, um, yeah, I'm quite happy to play the big price here and just cheer it on and just hope that Chelsea get on the score sheet. But yeah, like you guys, I fully expect City to score a minimum of two, more likely three. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Uh, couldn't agree more. It's going to be a really good game. I just uh, wrote in the chat, by the way, Junior, don't be going anywhere near Man City and unders. I mean, if you think Man City are going to win, yeah, you're in agreement with us. But this was 4-4 last time. And it was like, you take the lead, we take the lead. It's not, and the thing is, there's a list of players here that are far better than other players that have caused Man City problems. I mean, Palace drew here 2-2 by scoring two late goals just through having a bit of power and pace late on and energy. Here, you've got Palmer, Gallagher, Sterling, Jackson and Kunku. The list is endless of just a one misplaced pass from, I know we don't see it very often, like a Rodri or a De Bruyne, and boom! Chelsea are on their way. So please just be careful with that under business, all right? Um, and yeah, it's not about it's not like the Champions League. Champions League's over two legs. This is man this is man City now, pedal to the metal or all, all the way in. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Man City and both teams score plus one sixty. Man City in over two and a half for myself and for Brad. Minus one thirty five was minus one thirty there and uh, we've double dipped because Kevin De Bruyne assist is at plus 137 fancy that's going to get adjusted over the next coming uh, coming weeks uh, agreed city are hardly watertight says MH Junior said I had Man City in under four and a half goals against Everton last weekend that's because Everton come to basically just survival tactics Chelsea have the players who think they're better than they are, so they'll have a go, uh, which, again, Man City should be able to uh, completely destroy.